Today we're continuing with the five components of well-being as outlined by Dr. Marty Selegman. If you remember, Dr. Selegman leads the positive psychology program at the University of Pennsylvania and is considered the father of positive psychology. When we speak of fulfilling relationships, many people immediately think of romantic relationships. Indeed, these types of relationships are an important part of life. For thousands of years, novelists, poets, musicians, and philosophers have used romantic love as the focus for their creative energies. Over the past half century, television and movies have taken our preoccupation with romantic love to new heights, but also to new depths. While the rush of a new romance can be exhilarating to the point of intoxication, most of us also know the intense pain of heartache. Hollywood has done a remarkable job of portraying both sides of this equation. But is real life like that depicted in the movies? Sometimes yes, but most often no. In real life, we get to live the definition of happily ever after. And if we continually seek the rush of new romantic love, we are often disappointed. Have you ever heard someone speak of how miserable they are because they are, quote, alone? Sometimes I think to myself, well, I'm here, you're not alone. But we all know what that person really means. They are bemoaning the fact that they are not in a romantic relationship. Here too, their language belies their overemphasis on romantic love. Here's the good news. If we know this in advance, we can prepare for it. Instead of getting completely swept away by the inebriating impact of physiology, you know, that chemistry that so many speak of, we can enjoy the process of falling in love while keeping our brain close at hand for intermittent consultation. You can ask yourself questions like, how does this person treat others he or she says are important in their lives? What kind of relationship history does he or she have? Do we share the same views on important issues such as honesty, dependability, and faithfulness? Does this person know the value of hard work? Are we here for one another when the chips are down? Because at some point, the chips will indeed be down. So what if you're not in a romantic relationship? What if you're coming out of a bad relationship? Or what if you've never found that special someone? As I suggested earlier, I believe that all too often we put all our emotional eggs in the one basket of romantic love. In other words, in our current culture, romantic love is, dare I say it, too important. Think about it for a minute. Were your grandparents looking for a soulmate? I don't think so. They were looking for a good and dependable partner. Now, I'm sure they sought someone attractive, but they weren't pining for the likes of Matthew McConaughey or Charlize Theron. My point is that we're treating romantic love as if it is the only type of love there is. Let me share something with you. There are many types of love, and they all count. So many times we discard what our friends and our family can provide for us emotionally because we're chasing the dream of romantic love. People hang their entire self-worth on the opinion of their love interest. Now, this is a risky proposition. What your family and friends think of you matters. It is of considerable importance that you pay attention to these relationships. Allow those that are fond of you to provide positive feedback and allow this to count because it does and it can influence your opinion of yourself for the better. This bolsters self-esteem and makes you more resilient when difficult times hit. In an earlier segment, I mentioned how many different types of things we say we love, a book, a movie, a certain type of food, our dog. Sometimes I think we need to create more specific words to describe the nuances of these types of emotions. Perhaps we need as many words for love as the Eskimos have for snow. Until that happens, please consider broadening your definition of love because positive relationships are the number one predictor of happiness. Take time to cultivate relationships of all types. That leads to today's tip. Here it is. Spend some time thinking about all the people in your life. You can make a list if you want. Now, consider the influence that these people have. Think about how they impact you emotionally. Do they make you feel better about yourself? Do, they, do you return the favor? The best relationships are mutually beneficial. Consider this as you think of each person you've identified. 
Now, after you've done this, think of ways you can strengthen these relationships. You might want to write down those ideas, too. Then resolve to act on them. I'm not sure what your plan will be, but I'll leave you with the following thought. At a recent Sunday service, my pastor quoted a man named John Ortberg. Dr. Ortberg is a pastor, author, and psychologist living in California. Now, he said this, the requirement for true intimacy is chunks of unhurried time. I can't think of anything more pertinent here. Many of us are just too busy. We need to slow down. Make a point to spend chunks of unhurried time with family and friends. You'll be glad that you did. This is Bill Conklin with tips for a happier life. Thank you for your time.